So he is here to give you something about some information regarding the what is happening here at present today in our Rohingya in India and especially in Kerala, like Jan Slay, etc. He is an expert in it. So I recommend you also to this function. I welcome Murli Kumarvi also for a good talk. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Today, we are most privileged to have Dr. Murli Kumarvi as a guest for the day. Dr. Murli Kumarvi is the Chief of Disaster Risk Production in the UN Environmental Program, an internationally renowned expert in disaster response. He has we involved in post disaster response and follow of almost all major disasters of the 21st century, including the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, Cyclone Argus, Chishwan earthquake, and floods in Thailand. He has completed assignments in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Gaza Strip, Liberia, and Sudan dealing with the environmental impact of conflicts. Also deployed to China, Japan, Myanmar and Thailand to deal with disasters. Before joining the United Nations, he was an environmental advisor to the oil companies of Shell Group in Southeast Asia and Middle East. He responded to numerous oil spills and oil well fires during this period. He obtained his B.Tech degree from Arunesh's College of Engineering Kodamangram in 1986 and he obtained his M.Tech degree from Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur in 1988. Also, he received his Ph.D. from Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur in 1993. He has published several books and writes articles in leading Malayalam dailies vocation. He is the winner of Kerala Science Academy Award 2018 for literature. With due respect, we welcome you, sir, to handle the session. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I want to ask you something. Uh, first of all, is there anyone who don't understand Malayalam in this audience? Anybody who don't understand Malayalam? Malayalam, are you excited? Yes. 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 Secondly, I want to ask you, of all those who are present here, how many of you actually have heard of me before my teacher uh, told about me? I, I don't want to be bad if you said I never heard of you. Can I tell you how many of you have heard of me? Can I tell you who cared about this? It is why I didn't put the star for them. Engineering 
ഒരു കോർ ഫീൽഡിൽ നമ്മൾ ജോബിനെ ട്രാക്ക് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ചെറിയ ചെറിയ മാർക്ക് ശമ്പളം പെട്ടപ്പോഴാണ് മുതലായിരം രൂപയുടെ ആരോഗ്യ ശമ്പളമാണ് ഇതൊന്നും നമ്മൾ പേടിപ്പിക്കുന്ന കാര്യമല്ല നിങ്ങളുടെ ബാച്ച്മേറ്റ് ഒരാൾക്ക് ഗൂഗിളിൽ ഒരു വർഷം ഒരു കോടി രൂപയിൽ ശമ്പളം പിടിച്ചൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ ചെറുപ്പം ഇതൊന്നും നമ്മൾ പേടിപ്പിക്കുന്ന കാര്യമല്ല നമ്മളുടെ ഒന്നാമത്തെ മാസം നമുക്ക് എടുത്ത ശമ്പളവും ഒന്നാമത്തെ വർഷം നമുക്ക് എടുത്ത ശമ്പളവും ഇരുപത് വർഷം കഴിയുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് മാസം എടുത്ത ശമ്പളം ഒരു താഴെ ഒരു വർഷം നമ്മൾ ഒന്നാമത്തെ വർഷത്തിൽ കിട്ടുന്ന ശമ്പളം ഇരുപത് വർഷം കഴിയുമ്പോൾ ഒരു മാസം നമ്മൾ കിട്ടുന്ന അപ്പൊ ആ അർത്ഥത്തിൽ നമുക്ക് സാമ്പത്തിക നഷ്ടം ഉണ്ടാകുമെന്ന് നിങ്ങൾ പേടിക്കുന്നു കൂടുതൽ പഠിക്കാനുള്ള അവസരങ്ങൾ ഉള്ള ജോലി അതാണ് നമ്മൾ സീറ്റ് അതെന്താണ് എന്ന കോൺസ്റ്റന്റ് ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ അന്വേഷിച്ചോണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് ഏത് ഫീൽഡിലാണ് അവസരങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടാകുന്നത് ആ ഫീൽഡിലേക്ക് പ്രത്യേകമായ പ്രവർത്തിക്കേഷൻ എന്താണ് വേണ്ടത് നമ്മൾ ആദ്യം രണ്ടാമത് എങ്ങനെയാണ് മറ്റുള്ള ആളുകളുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടത് നെറ്റ്വർക്കിംഗ് ആണ് ഈ അടുത്ത നിങ്ങളുടെ തലമുറയിലെ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ ക്യാപിറ്റൽ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നെറ്റ്വർക്കിംഗ് ആണ് നിങ്ങളോടൊന്നും പറഞ്ഞു തരുന്ന കാര്യമില്ല സോഷ്യൽ മീഡിയയുടെ കാലമാണ് ഫേസ്ബുക്കിന്റെ കാലമാണ് ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് പോലെ അല്ല നെറ്റ്വർക്കിന്റെ പ്രൊഫഷണൽ ആയിട്ട് നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ നമ്മൾ ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നത് ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് ആപ്പ് ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ ആണ് നിങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവർക്കും ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ എന്ന് വിചാരിക്കും പക്ഷെ ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ ഇല്ലാത്ത ആരെങ്കിലും പ്രൊഫഷണൽ ലിങ്ക്ഡിനുള്ള കുറെ ആളുകളുണ്ട് നിങ്ങളുടെ കൂടെ ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ കോട്ടയിലുള്ള ആളുകളുണ്ട് നിങ്ങൾ പറയാം നൂറ് ശതമാനം ആളുകൾക്കും ഇപ്പോൾ ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ പ്രൊഫൈലുണ്ടായിരിക്കും കമ്പൽസറിയാണ് എല്ലാവരും പറയുന്നത് ഈ ഈ പ്രായത്തിൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒരു ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ പ്രൊഫൈൽ ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങൾ കിട്ടുന്നില്ല നമുക്ക് ജോലി കിട്ടാതിരിക്കാനുള്ള ഒന്നാമത്തെ ഉപായമാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് പ്രൊഫൈൽ നമ്മൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യുന്നു എന്നുള്ളത് നമ്മുടെ തൊഴിലിനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചോളം പ്രധാനമാണ് അത് ആ സാധാരണ കാര്യങ്ങളൊന്നും നമ്മൾ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കില്ല നമ്മൾ ഇല്ലായിരിക്കുന്നത് ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സ്വകാര്യ ഇടമാണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ചീട്ടുള്ള കാര്യങ്ങളും ചെയ്യും പറയും എത്ര തരത്തിലും ചിത്രങ്ങളും ഇനിയുള്ള കാലത്ത് ഇപ്പോൾ തന്നെ എംപ്ലോയേഴ്സ് കല്യാണം ആലോചിക്കുമ്പോൾ നമ്മളുടെ മയച്ചനും മയന്മയും നമ്മളുടെ ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് പ്രൊഫൈൽ ചെക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്ന പോലെ നമ്മൾ എംപ്ലോയ്മെന്റ് ഇത് നയിക്കുമ്പോൾ അവരും ആദ്യം പോയി ചെക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് പ്രൊഫൈൽ നിങ്ങൾ എന്താണ് അവിടെ കാണിച്ചു കൊടുക്കുന്നത് എന്നുള്ള പ്രധാനമാണ് നിങ്ങൾ അറിയാത്തത് തന്നെ നിങ്ങളുടെ ചിന്തകൾ ഫേസ്ബുക്കിന്റെ ഫേസ്ബുക്കിലൂടെ നിങ്ങൾ വീട്ടിൽ നിന്നുള്ള പറയാം വെറും അറുപത്തിയേഴ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ നിങ്ങൾ ഫേസ്ബുക്കിൽ നടക്കുന്ന അറുപത്തിയേഴ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ലൈക്ക് ആണ് ഷെയർ ആവണം കമന്റ് ആവണം മൂന്ന് കാര്യങ്ങളുടെ അറുപത്തിയേഴ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങളെ സംബന്ധിച്ചോളം വളരെയധികം പേരാണ് നിങ്ങൾ ആരോടും പറഞ്ഞിട്ടില്ലാത്ത പേരാണ് കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാൻ പറ്റുമെന്നാണ് ഗവേഷണം പറയുന്നത് ഒരു ദിവസം ഒരാഴ്ചയിൽ തന്നെ അറുപത്തിയേഴ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ നടക്കുന്നുണ്ട് വലിയ വില ഇപ്പൊ നിങ്ങൾ സംഭവം ഒരാഴ്ച ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അറുപതിനായിരം ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ നിങ്ങൾ ഫേസ്ബുക്കിൽ നടത്തിക്കേണ്ടി വരും നിങ്ങൾക്ക് അറിയാത്ത കാര്യങ്ങളല്ല അത് മാർക്കറ്റായി വിൽക്കുന്ന സ്ഥാപനം കൊടുക്കും എംപ്ലോയ്മെന്റ് സ്ഥാപനങ്ങൾ കൊടുക്കും ഇതാണ് നിങ്ങൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കണം ഇത് അറിഞ്ഞ് ചെയ്തില്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇതിന്റെ സ്വകാര്യ ഇടമാണ് മാർക്കറ്റ് വിൽക്കുക അത് ഭയങ്കര അപ്പൊ ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന പ്രൊഫൈൽ സ്ട്രോങ് ആയിട്ടുണ്ടാകില്ല ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന സ്ഥലത്ത് ഇടപെടുമ്പോൾ ഇതിന് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് സാധ്യതയുണ്ട് ഇനിയുള്ള കാലത്ത് കേരളത്തിൽ മാത്രമുള്ള വിദ്യാഭ്യാസം പലപ്പോഴും സെക്ഷന്റ് കേരളത്തിന് പുറത്ത് തെറ്റാണെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ത്യക്ക് പുറത്ത് കുറച്ച് നാളെങ്കിലും പഠിക്കാനുള്ള ശ്രമമാണ് ഇത് പുതിയ വിവരങ്ങൾ അറിയാൻ വേണ്ടി മാത്രമല്ല പുതിയ വിവരങ്ങൾ അറിയാൻ വേണ്ടി പുതിയ തരത്തിൽ പോട്ടെ ഏത് ഗ്രാമത്തിൽ വരുന്ന എങ്ങനെയുള്ള എം ഐ ടിയിലെ ട്രെയിൻ ടിക്കറ്റ് എല്ലാം ഓപ്പൺ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ റിസർച്ച് ആയിട്ട് ലക്ഷ്യമുണ്ട് പക്ഷെ മറ്റുള്ള ആളുകളുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധം സ്ഥാപിക്കണം എന്നുള്ളതാണ് എനിക്ക് പറഞ്ഞത് അതിനുവേണ്ടി സാധിക്കുമ്പോഴെല്ലാം യാത്ര ചെയ്യുക മറ്റുള്ള സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ മറ്റുള്ള ആളുകളുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധം സ്ഥാപിക്കുക ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ വഴി ബന്ധം സ്ഥാപിക്കുക നേരിട്ട് ബന്ധം സ്ഥാപിക്കുക
problem solving. I I 
ഇവിടെ കളങ്ങി ആയിരിക്കില്ല ഇവിടെ ഒപ്പം കൂടിയുള്ള ആയിരിക്കും കൂടുതൽ ചോദിക്കുന്നത് എനിക്ക് അവിടെ കാര്യമുണ്ട് പക്ഷെ അതായിരിക്കും സാധാരണ സംഭവം ഇതെല്ലാം മാറണം പറ്റുന്ന എല്ലാം കേരളത്തിന് പുറത്തു കേരളത്തിൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് സ്വാഭാവികമായി വളരാൻ പറ്റിയ സ്ഥലമാണ് അങ്ങനെയാണെങ്കിൽ കേരളത്തിൽ പുറത്ത് ഇന്ത്യക്ക് പുറത്ത് പറ്റുമ്പോഴെല്ലാം പോയി അവസരങ്ങളുടെ ആകാശം ഉള്ള സ്ഥലത്ത് പോയി വളരണം സർക്കാരും നിർത്തലാണ് സ്വതന്ത്ര ചോദിക്കാനുള്ള അവസരം ഉണ്ട്
I'm very grateful that I have a disability journey because it opened my eyes to a whole world of things. Especially when I moved into the system and passed the construction industry, I have a lot of interactions with other disciplines also. From the instrumentation, electronic processes, building management systems. And one thing I said to as long as the world is in existence, civil engineers are required. You know, sometimes I have civil engineering students you know, who come and are very disappointed and I said, do not be disappointed. If you have to manufacture a, a car, for example, or even a computer or a laptop, you still need to build a building. You can't just go out and be open and sit down with me and take that thing, any of these things. So where does it all start? It all starts with real civil engineering. Civil engineering is really dirty work. It's not going to be something that you are very comfortable with. One of the companies I worked uh, at uh, earlier was last minute to go the leading engineering, uh, they say we are builders of a nation, you know, that's their tagline. Uh, Karanka, CEO and managing director, Mr. K. Subramanian, fantastic gentleman, he joined that organization in 1984 as a graduate engineer training. And he is rose on to become the CEO and MD. You now, the last I was just uh, looking at the uh, last year's uh, report. They have 279,443 crore rupee worth of business in their pocket, in the books. And their current turnover is in the region of 1,20,000 crores. So he's sitting on 1,20,000 crores. You may not even have a thought about those numbers. A person who joined as a graduate engineering training here for and the one statement which he made, which is always rings through my mind, and whenever I talk to young people, I keep telling this. He said, construction is not ACPC. Can anybody give me an answer what is ACPC? Students. Simply a condition room and a personal computer. Construction is not ACPC. Construction is being out there in the rain and the sun and the shine, water working in the situation, and dirty your hands. You have to get your clothes dirty. That way can be a real good construction related system. All civil engineers, whether you are in design or other processes, I always say that you need to go and see what is happening on a construction site. You really don't you need to go through the process. Okay, some of you would, would, would probably get into academics and research, and, and that's a very small percentage, but the majority would be out there in the construction site. I spent 20 years in the Middle East and um, was a very academic kind of career. So that's where I really learned how to be, you know, a real hard construction man. Because our construction site, we start work at 6 in the morning. Some of you may not even have seen 6 o'clock in the morning for many days, for many years. But we have to start work at 6 in the morning. We have to go and punch in our car. So that I have to get up at 4 30 a.m. in the morning. My bus to the construction site goes at 5 15. If I don't catch the bus at 5 15, I cannot punch in my car. If I don't punch in my car for that day, nobody, monkey fools, <laughs> they don't get attendance for a day. You know, that's how the system works. And we start work at 6 o'clock in the morning. Our normal working hours are from 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening. But we used to have extra work that we call it overnight. We used to get paid for it. I had to be there at 8 o'clock in the evening. Usually, they used to, uh, dinner time is at 7 and the, the camp that I used to stay in the camp now. now what we call a construction camp that is staffed by the labor of our state. People staying on the of dinner. And uh, we get dinner there, back dinner at this time. And I get back to my room or to the camp around 9, 9 15. We get hungry, we need time to do anything. We just go there for around 5 10 minutes, have a bath, and then crash. Because you have to be at 4 30 in the morning. I spent one full year working in those conditions. And that is where I really learned what it is to be a civil engineer on a construction site. I started work on the, in the end of May, uh, going to Terra where the rains have started, and I landed in a place where the desert temperatures are in the late 40s to early 50s. So, nobody would have ever been experienced that. 
It is a huge shock and you know, what you want to see like you see water now in the Kotanar region. You know, if you go there, you will see sand covers all over the place. You know, it's just sand. You are there. But that one year that I spent, we were six of us who were recruited from India. Of that, uh, four of them in the first three months of service, they went back. They said, you are not able to stand this kind of a better condition. But one thing I decided that I will not do that. I will go through the entire process, understand what it is, and thereby develop my character. And that is, I, I always am very proud to say that that one year of struggle that I do is actually what helped me to develop my career and take me to the place that I, I am in. So do not be disheartened as a civil engineer is children. The life is not going to be a good for you. Civil engineers are always in demand. I have now currently worked with Tata and Serving Engineers. We have Program on your projects, design and conversion uh, of, of projects. And uh, there are 77 construction sites which are actively working both in India and other places like Nigeria, Rwanda, Zambia, South Africa, South Africa, you know, Middle East, Indonesia, and all these places. So there's all these work. We always find it very difficult to even hire a teacher. You know, we find it difficult to get a teacher. Who will have the right attitude to work? We will not think that construction is easy peasy. So if you want to really do well in the construction industry, you should never think that it is easy peasy. And so there's always there's always work. There's always work. But there's never a shortage. That is something engineer. After I used to be the last week to have close to a thousand graduate engineer trainees we used to pick up every year. Every year, a thousand of them from all over India. And uh, I used to be part of the onboarding process, uh, training and teaching. But um, most of them say, by the end of the year, almost 25 30 percent of them give up. They say it's too hard for us to be going on site and working long hours. Uh, but most of the time, it's not just true, it's not the GEs themselves. I find it is the problem with the parents. You must be wondering, what are they going to say? Well, most of the students, most of the students, you know, people we hire are from middle class, upper middle class families. Both the parents working. The father may be a professor. The mother may be a chief engineer. The two are bank manager. And in um, LNT, we used to have a two lakh rupee bond. And the mother, the parent, the son, or the daughter, who are struggling here, it's very hard here. You know, they don't want any more than any little bit. We don't like to do anything like that. And I've seen that happening. One of the guys came and told me, sir, I'm thinking, what happened? So I'm going to do my master's degree. And the guy who came to perform doing his bachelor's, he wants to do a master's. Uh, after this, he never used to come in and I got a back pain. My mother is sick, father is sick, I could. And then I asked him, what are you going to do? I will then get recruited again from the campus. I will get into a higher position as an assistant manager. So he thinks that that is how he is going to go forward. Unfortunately, this is the kind of thinking that which, with which we come along. But I've seen other, other, other than that young people who come as what we call that as YEDP, who very quickly latch on to the system and are always willing to learn. The body here very clearly is that if you know these things are the degree, we need 52 papers. But hardly 5% of it is what we use when you come into a construction or for the industry. But when you teach as a faculty, you will see 100 percent. But when you get into work environment, you learn. As an engineer, you have actually developed good analytical skills. In today's world, in order to work, that is what is required, analytical skills. Because today there are a lot of data which gets thrown on, even in the construction industry. I myself have been the uh, uh, safety department of uh, computer safety for all, so the entire group. I have 47 parameters that I measure on a month when it comes to safety. 47 different line items. Just on safety. So, just like that, we have so many other departments which have so many line items which we measure on a monthly basis. So, today, kind of data is a really big input and good analytical skills. At the same time, we all think we could have skills. But then there is another issue which you have. You are going to be working not in Guadalajara or Kotein or Mandan or within the, the state of Kerala. Most of you will be moving out of Kerala. 
How well are you working with communication skills? That's very important. So you need to have good oral communication as well as good like written communication skills. This is very important. You should know how to present an issue before an audience or even when you talk in a meeting, you have an issue. How do you articulate that issue on us? That's very, very important. And that you have right reports. That's also very important. How do you use the correct words so that it gets across to people? Now, what I want to tell you is that you are not just going to get all these things within a day or two. It takes time. But what you need to do is you need to be working on it very regularly. And I really like what I've only said. You need to have a LinkedIn profile. Many people sometimes think that LinkedIn profile is also uh, a <laughs> social media. Sometimes I look at comments and I tell them, listen, I, 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 you find me on, on the LinkedIn and I don't know. Hi sir, how are you doing? Good morning. Huh? And people do that. So recently I wrote a gentleman, I mean, here everybody, so hi or good morning, you are not going to get a response from you please write in detail what is the kind of response from you. I will respond to you immediately. And many people are on the first day that people say, Hi, good morning, how are you today? You'll never get a response from that. That's where you use your Facebook or your FaceTime or Messenger or your so. But LinkedIn is a professional uh, uh, media which, if you use it quite well, you'll be able to even land a good job. Now, I'd like to say about the job. I joined LNP because the last time you were head of uh, HR was on LinkedIn and he searched for my profile on LinkedIn. He got in touch with me through LinkedIn. The same is the case where I'm working now with data consulting engineers also. So, you see, it's a good platform in order to further your career also. But again, it will take a little time. First, find a job for yourself. There are sometimes some students who write me, I finished my B-Tech in certain subjects uh, or uh, something. What should I do next? You know what I tell them is, go and find a job for yourself. I want to do an M-Tech and you know what they say, you want to do No. Go find a job for yourself. Find out what is the specific area of your existing domain that you do well. Work for a couple of years and then Look in terms of whether you want to do a master's degree or not. People like Murli, they very quickly done. People like me, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not a very academically old person, but I was still that learning is something which is very, very constant. Now, it's like never think that having an MTech and a PhD is actually going to raise your job profile. Your job profile is what you need to get an experience first. And your office, your office, your course, because of your campus may not even have a campus recruitment. I'll tell you something. You guys are really lucky because you have campus recruitment. In 86, when we graduated, did we have any campus recruitment? I think it's yours. But today the problem is, students have a problem. There are too many people coming to the campus. What do we do? We did not have a choice those days. We'll have to sit at home, go to the class, and add the newspapers. Or some of some of our friends they went to Mumbai or to Delhi or to Chennai and uh, you know went cold calling in the offices with an application, dropped it at the reception. Some of them, some receptions actually take it and tear it up and throw it in the. You know, it was not at all that very and we didn't do it. That time we never used to have uh, networking. You know, the word that we used to network. There was no networking in those days. If we have a fire room and reach a house of money, I don't have a call immediately. I need to uh, maybe make a call or just take a risk. I have to travel maybe from Nagala all the way to Bengal. He may or may not be there. You know, telephones are not very, 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 very popular like what you have today. So that was the generation in which today all of you guys are lucky. But then you need to know how to leverage it to your best. Communication, networking, media, etc. Leverage to your best. So when you graduate, don't run away doing a master's program. A professor in uh, IIT one was telling me he was talking about academies, etc. You know, he's he, he done his PhD from uh, I think uh, University from the Indian University. 
You know, the stupid question actually becomes as answer.
See, the term which is used was you want coolies who can work with computers. Yeah. They were known as computer coolies. Yeah. In the uh, life of Google, uh, just recently, uh, we were at the end of the the campus for TCS and NCL. So, NCL had a problem in Delhi, Noida, so I went to the place over there. The quick if you have 10,000 people work over there. For lunch, let's go to the food court. So we went to the food court, huge food court for about 5,000 people, you can say. And then I saw some rooms which were there. They were also dining rooms. And uh, it was written executive dining rooms. Oh, that's good. So I thought uh, we got a food and uh, I said, let's go to the So you cannot go there. That's only meant for all of our vice presidents and others. Now, in the past, when you go to a factory, say a HMP or somewhere around here, you will go to a, you know, a canteen like this. Usually, that open area is for the foreman and the workmen. And all engineers and above will be sitting in those executive rooms. Today, what's happened is, as you have people sitting in that, that open area, for basically what I said, as they have titled themselves as computer coolies. You know, there's, there's a whole changing pattern in the, the whole industry which is happening. So, yeah. I'm not talking to the people. People are changing. I think it's very convenient. As you said, there is anything that there is peace. I'm very very good. You can actually travel. I'm not denying a very interesting job. And for a young person, they would much rather in that job than be on a LRT construction site and spending and getting. Probably, you know, the lending probably pays less, but then I'm a construction person, probably pay only one point two. But what happens in the current core job is that your value with your company increases as the years pass by. The fact that I think the opposite is happening. I was talking to a senior IT manager last week, and he said, Look, our problem is this. We are getting a lot of new projects, and these new projects don't need people with 10 year experience. But we have an inventory of over 200,000 people who are over 10 years experience. And who suddenly actually for monthly for year by year has gone up. We don't need them. We actually need only fresh people to them. So we somehow want to get rid of these people. So they are not valued. So I'll ask you, if you go 10 years, you feel more and more undervalued in your system and your report amount. As a person is actually fresh. But same time, if you are young and if you want to have an easy PC life, I'm not against it, you know, I mean, it's all choices we make. It's the other question. Yes, it was not. Yes, it was not. So, we know that uh, we are dealing with many environmental issues happening in and around the world. Uh, last year also, uh, as we all know, uh, led was there, and this year also some kind of disaster has taken place. But uh, both that facades are the natural and man-made. So, one doubt is, since I also belong to environment area, I have a special interest in this. So, I just want to know whether it is a computation of both natural facade and man-made facades. The other thing is that, uh, in fact, we know that technologies are advancing. Obviously, we used to hear the term sustainable environment. Whether we can balance the environment as these technologies or developments are increasing on one side. Thank you. The United Nations position is that there are no natural disasters, there are no natural disasters. This is our opinion. There are natural hazards. Rainfall is a natural hazard. A quick is a natural hazard, but it's not a natural disaster. Natural disaster is when you put your something of value to you at a place where there is a hazard. So if you build a house in a place which has a potential for everything, and if you don't do it well, then the building will collapse. And that is not a fault of the earthquake. Get the earthquake, the theory is that earthquakes don't kill people, buildings do. So, what are the buildings? Suppose I know what's right. 
very important on the fact. And the rain, it has always been fighting. The whole history of both history and geography of the world is that of this. But when you start to go and build and stay, we'll build the castle and so on. Castle and bridges and railway and everything else. The part of those quarters and also that is built. So just by Understanding the natural hazard, we can avoid as this. This is, this is a theory. Of course, there are edges which you have to uh, manage. Second question is about sustainable development. Now, people often think that you can either have a long term or development, not more. This is actually not true. In fact, the opposite is true. The better development you can have, more environment. Better environment you can actually afford to have. I have written this uh, recently. I, you know, I, in my generation, you know, I think some of you remember this, and I actually referred it with my process. When I was young, there were actually much less number of trees in this place. Much less number of trees. You cannot believe this. Most people believe that trees have been completely cut in the last 20 years. No. And there was, there was left, and around the world, the problem. But it was not only about the problem. It was a little bit of a 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 problem. So, therefore, the only thing you have is to cut down the trees and then use it. So, I have to go to the other direction. 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 I have to go to the other direction.
ഇരുപത്തി മുപ്പത്തിരണ്ട് ദിവസം പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞു അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ ഒന്നുകൂടി അക്സസൈസ് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടി മാത്രം പറയാം വിട്ടിട്ട് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഞാൻ നേരെ എവിടേക്ക് പോയ ഒരാള് പക്ഷെ ഇന്ന് ആണെങ്കിൽ തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും ഞാനത്
അതുകൊണ്ട് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്നുണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നാളെ